all this stuff is just patterns of, of human behavior. And, and people will say, well, you know, I don't believe in this sorts of things, but you know, you don't, then you don't believe in patterns within human beings. And like, there's clearly patterns in the way humans behave. So yeah, uh, this is a highlighting the two major downtrends we've seen this cycle. And, um, you know, the one we had middle of last year. Uh, so I, I, I basically highlighted like three, uh, phases of the, uh, I call it the the cycle phase, uh, the life cycle, or corrective phase life cycle, I should say. Um, so this is realized losses on, on a weekly, uh, on an hourly time frame, but a weekly uh, duration as uh, a simple moving average. And so just to kind of show like periods where it's it's um, uh, higher, it just it just allows it to kind of condense the data. But mm-hmm. but basically, you can see there the the three the kind of the three phases, right? So you have your initial capitulation and panic. Uh, and, th- and these can last for different periods of time, but it just so happens that the one uh, middle of last year uh, coming off the highs. So j- you can see just before, like this is a- around April 13th or so we put in our high, that was that peak just to the left of the, the box. So we had that peak and then we had a pretty steep drop, right? Um, or actually, sorry, uh, correct myself. Maybe there was a peak just to the left off the chart. I'm not sure, but either way, or no, that was the one we had a drop there, but yeah, anyways, we had our drop. Um, and when that drop occurred, you could start to see the realized losses tick up, right? You started to see people selling at a loss, mm. and you know the further the the price uh, downtrended, the, you know the faster the pace it downtrended. In that initial uh, period, you saw a really big ramp up and a big spike in the in the realized losses, right? And just like mm. billions and billions of dollars being realized in, in the losses over a period of uh, that month or so or two months. And so that initial phase, that's what it is, is capitulation, it's panic. People, they're freaking out, right? The price is dropping really fast. We're seeing a lot of uh, longs get liquidated. Um, the price is coming down. And so that's usually the majority of the losses are taken that first phase. You can see that on both, uh, kind of in both uh, downtrends, right? And then you have that kind of like uh, the middle area, which is you have, you know fear and, uh, fear and doubt. So people are kind of unsure. There's definitely a lot of doubt still. I mean, because, you know, you're, the price has gone down so much um, and there's still a good amount of losses happening. So you, you might have a second kind of like you have like a um, kind of like a false rally and then another drop in the price. And so, you know, there's more fear in the market. People aren't maybe in as much of a panic state because it's been a few months of downtrending now. So they're kind of a little bit more level headed, but there's still in a, like there's still fear across the board on the market. And again, these are the emotions that play into causing people to get be shaken out of the market, right? Like it's these are these are people that are just weak hands. They're newer participants. They haven't been around as long. They haven't experienced like this level of volatility, and mm-hmm. so they get scared and then they sell. And, and you can just see the, the large amounts and these similar patterns playing out between the, the two downtrends. And then that third phase, you know, you have a little bit more belief and optimism coming back into the market. Um, you have a, a each time you have like a, a stair a stair ladder down in the in the um, Kind of like the the degree of, of losses being taken so mm-hmm. there still are losses being taken but it's each time it's less severe you can see the pattern right it's each time it's less severe um but the the last one of of the middle of last year we saw um kind of like all the losses being taken on that big spike the difference is we had a similar mm-hmm. amount of losses being taken on the this uh, more recent downtrend over the last four months but the difference was it was more spread out. It was more like a sustained mm. high level. It wasn't all in one in one period. Um, but you can see like the, the biggest losses happen when we have those big drops in the price. Like it's 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 obvious. I mean, it's obviously correlated. Right. But the interesting thing is in both of these um, patterns, we actually saw our lows occur in the fear and doubt phase. So the actual low that was put in in the in the middle of last year one. Um, if you were to zoom in, you'd see the actual low was put in during that fear and doubt uh, middle right. phase. And the same thing, uh, our 33K low was in the fear uh, and doubt phase on this rally. So same kind of thing in the middle. And then um, both times, we kind of we kind of eventually put in our, our, bo- our second bottom, you could say, and had our actual rally. So we had a false rally out of the uh, the fear and uh, doubt on the, on the second downtrend. But either, either one, it took a little bit longer. Uh, on this one to get our, um, because, and this is what I believe the reason why uh, belief and optimism, uh, that cat- that uh, phase took a lot longer to play out is because of the macro narratives. We didn't have the same macro narratives as the middle of last year. Like this, this last four months, there was a lot of, uh, there still is obviously, but like, you know, a lot of war stuff and just, you know, rate hikes and all these different narratives that I think caused 
more and more people to get bled out and that, that you can see the difference. I mean, we had, and, and the reason why, like, so, so people understand the chart here, it, it ends. And the reason why I ended it is because we we're now at a level that is, 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 is basically extremely low, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, so, so like it, it, I'm, I'm kind of breaking this down when it either has like a, a big drop between each phase, or we get like, you could see, you know, I kind of ended the, the, in my opinion, I ended this life cycle because we're now at the same low level we were at um, at the middle of last year when we actually had our recovery already occur. So um, yeah, you can see the losses being taken now are, are, are a lot like they're comparable level. And, but you can see we had a sustained higher amount in belief and optimism. That that phase was was sustained a lot longer than middle of last year. And $21 mm -hmm. billion dollars of losses, um, even though the price is uptrending for a good percentage of that, that phase, we still had $21 billion of losses. Uh, whereas, you know, um, the other the other uh, recovery middle of last year was, was only seven. So yeah, I mean, overall, a lot more losses realized in these last four months, but you can see the pattern has played out now. And the, the thing that would cause um, us to go back into this kind of corrective phase um, from the loss side would be uh, extreme, you know, uh, Black Swan, of course, would do it. Um, or if we have like a lot of realized profits taken, like a crazy amount of realized profits taken on a, on a move up. Um, and there's just not enough uh, demand in the market. Um, you know, that can cause the price to drop further. But we have a long ways to go, in my opinion, because this this is played out between 30, 33 and 48,000, like this whole this whole kind of move is uh, this 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 chart I'm showing is you know it's kind of played out um, in that range. It yeah, it, it, in my opinion, it would take a, us going pretty low, right? Probably below mm -hmm. 37, maybe below 33 before we have those those um, kind of we can like uh, before we have more people turn into kind of we cans and get shaken out. So yeah, yeah. I've talked a lot about this, but anything you want to add, Charlie or, or DC? Um, I just cool. think it's a good visual to kind of show. Like I've showed this in the past, but yeah, it's been a few months since I've. Kind of showed it yeah a couple just a couple simple things was yeah i agree on that that 33k being the area where people would basically be like you know in so much pain that like okay even though i'm at a loss i gotta realize this right um but um yeah i just remember you showing this in the crypto mindset course you right. know when we were still in this this fear doubt phase right we were halfway and through yeah exactly during the course last course uh, this this yellow box, we were 50% roughly through that box. So yeah, right. keep... Yep. And I think a lot of people were like, do, do, do you think we can get back into this belief optimism phase? Do you believe the low could be in? Like, you know, because um, they were in that fear, the fear and the doubt, right? But, um, you know, they were smart enough to be basically like, hey, I need to, you know, uh, get some information, figure this out in the course. And so, you know, I think that was really helpful for people you know, when we were saying, you know, under $35,000, you know, um, buy the coins that you're really, you know, convicted in, you know, no problem. Under 38000 is very nice too. Um, but, you know, you want to try to get it while Bitcoin's under uh, under $40,000. And, you know, I think a lot of people had to close their eyes and be like, okay, I'm going to do it. Press that green button, you know. And after, you know, seeing all the research and stuff like that with, with this, I think it is really important for people because, you um, it helps people to zoom out in, and just have another angle. So that's why I think, you know, when we look at the fundamentals, when we look at the the technicals, and then we look at the on-chain data all together, it just adds the extra layer of confidence um, for people. So um, yeah. you know, this is really good information. As well as you shouldn't be selling on these crazy red days. It's typically a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sell it all. It's all going to zero. So I was going to zero, basically. Yeah, I mean, once you've had a little more time in the market, you kind of understand where where it's going. Doesn't make doesn't make it any less painful while it's happening. Yeah, but you but you but you know patient. but you, yeah you got you're more patient and you kind of know like is this market really going to die? No. Has anything fundamentally changed? No. We're fine. Yeah, I mean, it's nice also to be able to track like you know this sort of data and be aware of the where the market's at, right? And and I will admit, like, even though I have access to all this great data, like, you know, even being going through these these uh, phases, like I'm, I'm kind of, you know, it's tough because you spend a lot of time on social media and, and you really do feel the emotions of the market and everyone mm. is kind of uh, amplifying th this behavior. Like if you're not on social media and you're just by yourself, you know, it's a lot easier when you when you're experiencing the market or you you know you're getting good information from you guys like it's a lot easier to be level-headed but again we've talked about this in in previous streams 
you got to be careful who you expose your uh, brain to as far as like thoughts being put in your, your head, right? Because mm -hmm. obviously the media, you know, they're, they're professionals at, at, at uh, selling fear, essentially, is what they do. They sell fear a lot of the time. And, and also uh, YouTube channels, you know, certain guys in, the, in, the, in crypto, I mean, and, and different people, like they have reasons, you know, at times where maybe they're out of position in the market and they have a big influence and they actually want to see the price go down. And so they'll, they'll create a lot of uh, fear and narrative. So again, like you got to be careful who you expose, um, expose yourself to. You want to have multiple sources, of course, but um, again, it, it comes down to um, just understanding th this natural progression of, of emotions. And, uh, and, look, and that's why we focus on the data, because you can remove the emotions as much as possible. We're all humans, so we're going to have emotion. But yeah, how do you guys, how do you guys manage your emotions? Because, I mean, we, we just because we've been here longer, we've gone through more of these sorts of um, emotional roller coasters. And this will happen on shorter time frames, too. This can happen on, you know, but if you think about being in Bitcoin and crypto for four plus years, I mean, we've gone through so many different roller coasters of these sorts of corrections, right? Like, mm. so how, how do you guys deal with it yourself or... Or how do you? How does it affect you now? I just take a bunch of crystal and then just um. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you just binge on that crystal math token. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um. In terms of controlling my emotions, I mean, sometimes it's just good to step away for a little bit. In terms yeah. of just like, I'm just going to go outside for a walk. You know, <laughs> like I think I think what ends up happening is that it, when when it's really that bad of a day, I mean. You ain't going to change anything. So it, once you've done whatever moves you're going to do, just kind of like write down why you did it or why you didn't do something, especially I like anytime I'm feeling a lot of emotions, I just, I have this little journal that I write down, like, why did I do this trade or why did I invest in this? Uh, and like, I sold this for this, this at this date, and these are the prices. And then maybe a little at the bottom, I just write like, I thought it was a good move and that's, I mean, it doesn't have to be, it, it just whatever you would understand basically. Mm. And then that just helps me kind of, you know, I, th I think a lot of people just have, I mean, are really bad at managing emotions just because they keep themselves bottled up all the time. Themselves yeah, bottled the, up all the time. Yeah. yeah. They don't have people to talk to, um, you know, that are in a similar situation They're doing it by themselves. Correct. Um, they are not, not used to the volatility. Like, you know, they, they don't, you know, they're, fixated on like the one minute chart or some bullshit, you know? And um, yeah, I agree with everything you're saying there. And, and I think, you know, for, for me in 2018, right. When, you know, there was nothing going on in crypto, it was just study, study, study. And it still is right. It's no different now. Like during each of these downtrends, I'm like, okay, great. This gives me some, you know, kind of quiet time to, study okay so what did i miss before that i can improve on and okay i just go search for that information if the information is out not out there you know i find the people who can you know create that information or or you know analyze the market differently from me and i start talking to them so that's you know uh why you know me dcc and plan c love talking to each other because uh, we each come at it from a different angle we can each learn something uh different from each other and so we you know share that knowledge i mean the green room before and after the show is always awesome so um yeah, I think, you know, compounding knowledge um, is something that people don't do enough. Um, and um, yeah, and, you know, part of compounding that knowledge is looking at the actual data, right? What is, the, what are the charts either on the, uh, on TradingView or on Glassnode or whatever? What are they telling us, um, you know, if we remove, remove our emotions from them? Because um, some people get too caught up in, um, you know, it's going to zero or it's going to 10 K or it's going to 20 K talk. Um, and they listen, like you said, they listen to two, like they listen to everything that is out there. And because most of the media is negative, then they turn negative, which I, right. I think they have to have a little bit more conviction, um, with, you know, their knowledge and the information they're getting as well, as well as, um, this is kind of one of the beauties of like the crypto mindset course, when it comes to the chat is like, you have a bunch of, because I understand like, you know, there's like, it's if you know choosing the crypto path is a little lonely sometimes <laughs> just because there isn't other because most people in your life you know are not in crypto or think it's or think it's bullshit oh, yeah. <laughs> early yeah, adopter I, status i mean that's just you know yeah you know, I, think, I think there was an article that i saw recently it was just like 20 percent of americans have dabbled in crypto meaning they're not like hardcore and it says like you walk down the street means one every out of five people 
has like maybe bought some Shiba Inu or something, but <laughs> you know, typically like, Shiba. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not much else going on, you know, for most normies. Right. So it's like, it, and, and so the crypto mindset, you know, Telegram chats and stuff are one of the best places to talk with other like one percenters in the crypto space about kind of what, and and also at the same time, when you have a crypto mindset course, you have a, a a degree of the people that are also starting their journey at the same time. So you guys are all kind of going on this hero's journey at the same time. As you take every additional crypto mindset course, you guys are evolving over time and you can have these this sort of talks. And as well as you, as time goes on, you start mentoring some guy in the chat who is just like you about six months ago. And you start noticing mm. like, wow, I, I look that crazy. It really puts things in perspective. <laughs> it is, it is. Cause you like, you know, uh you you don't record yourself you don't write down your thoughts and stuff like that but like yeah you're like oh shit yeah that guy does kind of remind me of what i used to be like you know i used to freak out like that too you know it, it is kind of interesting to see that progression uh when you, when you're comparing it like that no so. definitely it's it's funny i get i get those messages all the time when i'm doing like consultations and we're talking and they're like man the chats are acting crazy i was like that's how you guys were acting six months ago <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny actually uh, yeah, uh, uh, Ardo Crypto in, uh, uh, says uh, some of my 